And welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a, a website for theater buffs covering Broadway and off-Broadway theater. And I have a friend of mine who's been, we've been developing a relationship, I guess, for a long time. Bonnie, I really love everything you do. It's so much fun to have you on. Uh, Bonnie Comley, she is a producer, three-time Tony Award winner, Olivier winner, two-time Drama Desk winner, uh, the founder of an incredible Broadway HD, which is a, a worldwide international website for theater lovers streaming all kinds of theater, which we're going to talk about too. Uh, she's the president of the Drama League, and, um, and she's many uh, philanthropic activities that I'm not even up to speed on. But we're going to talk today also about her recent exhibition. She has a, an installation uh, at Shashama, uh, and it's called uh, Nothing to Wear. Uh, it's a clothes installation, which is really cool. But first, and uh, yeah, this is Bonnie's. Uh... Anyway, Bonnie, thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to have you. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, and thanks for like the, the promoting all of my uh, all of my work. I really love that, and and the friendship does go back for years. So I really <laughs> that's the most important. That's the thing that I cherish the most. It's so a that's thing. A thing you have to cultivate. It's it's you know anyway. It's nice to to, to have you as one of my friends. Thank you. Uh, but you know what? What I want to I want to show everybody your miraculous thing that you founded. I just want to give them a sizzle reel for Broadway HD because I don't know how much time we'll get to talk about Broadway HD, and I want them to see how fabulous it is. So could we just show that sizzle reel on Broadway HD? It is so cool, but I mean, you, anybody that loves theater needs to watch Broadway HD or have a subscription to it. Uh, it's how long has it been up now? How many years? We're in our tenth year. We're wow. In our tenth year. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, people are just enjoying it. We've uh, proved that there is a business. We proved that people are want to watch theater on TV. So, um, so we're in our tenth year, Broadway HD. That's great. It's 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 fabulous, and you have you have Hugh Jackman's Oklahoma Stu told me that's going to be coming soon. Yes, and yes. You you have can tell us when that's going to happen or no? You don't know the date. Uh, I, I don't have the exact date on me. It's like any minute now. Um, <laughs> okay. Like before we, it 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 you know I like so so much content stuff rotates off and then comes back. So we had it and then rotated off and it's back again. Okay, um, but rotated that's off while the Broadway the the rev, the, rev, the revival was happening. Um, so uh, we took it uh, took it down at that time. So not to be confused. So yeah, well. <laughs> let's uh, let's circle back and talk to Broadway about Broadway HD now because you you have something that's really fun that you just did your nothing to wear art installation at Shoshama uh, and we want to talk a little bit and educate people what Shoshama is even so well, Shoshama was founded by Anita Durst um, she is an artist and she uh, worked in Europe and then came back here to New York City where she grew up to um, you know, sort of reassess herself and her life and how she could support other artists. And her family is in real estate. So she kind of looked and saw unused real estate and said, you know, why can't we use this space, repurpose it for artists? So it started off that it was uh, performers using it and then it turned into really more for uh, artists that are doing um, creating art or exhibiting art. And now she's going into, uh, she's almost 30 years old with this organization and they repurpose unused real estate, storefronts, office spaces all around New York City um, and allow uh, artists to go in and, and use it. Uh, most of them are free of charge. Um, and it's it's really an amazing opportunity because that's one of the things that's so hard for artists is to actually find space to create their art and then to find space to exhibit it. Um, and then sometimes it's sometimes it's short term and sometimes it's long term. Yes, and, yes. And so she never has know. now like 
thousands and they have millions of square feet that they've done. In fact, her program is actually the prototype for other cities around the world are now coming and looking to see how this particular organization is run and saying, you know what? Yeah, let's let's do that. You know, why shouldn't these spaces uh, find some it, temporary uh, use? And, and let's uh, put our name again. Up. What's her name again? Anita Durst. Anita Durst. Is the founder of it's Shoshana. The founder. It's, it's the founder of Shoshana. And it's it's everything you've invited me to. I've been to a few events that they've had with Shoshana because you've invited us to some, some of them. It's always been tons of fun and interesting people and all, always something wonderful. Let, let's talk about your your exhibition. It's it's on um, East uh, 340 East 64th Street at a space there that was really cool. We went to the opening night. Uh, Jody, can we show? There's about two or three pictures I think of we have of the installation on opening night. Well, there's the, the, the sort of the logo title card, if you will, the nothing to wear. Hold that for one minute. I, yeah. Now, are you really naked there in that what? photo? Oh, are you really naked or did you No, no, I have actually a strapless bathing suit on. So it sort of looks like, you know, gives the illusion. It's smoke and mirrors. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I love it. It's a fabulous, fabulous uh, promotional card. Thank you. Thank you. But the point is, it's, you know, it's excess. We all have all of these things in our closet, but so often we're standing looking into our closet or looking at our, you know, bureau and chest of drawers and saying, I, I, I don't have anything to wear. And it's really not about that we don't have anything to wear. It's just being insecure in the choices that we have. Um, because the whole point of the nothing to wear installation is clothing used to be functional, right? It used to be to keep us warm in the winter and to protect us from the sun. You've gotten summer. so far away from that, yes. <laughs> and it's now a statement of something else. Colors used to be just for, and still are, um, for certain, it's royalty, it's to connote, you know, college colors, um, it's to note, na can connote gang colors now. Um, and so it's, it's moved so far from being something functional to being something that can be creative and expressive, or it can be really stifling that you can't, you know, with all these choices that you have, why can't we figure it out? And I think in my installation, I have have different stations within that uh, you go through with the first, you know, one is, um, is basically to give some context to, to the exhibit itself, which is clothing used to be functional. How did it turn from being functional into something that you're, it's your style, it's fashion, it's fast fashion. We have to have something new every season. That was so last season. It's turned into, as they said, uniforms. You Around the world, you can be docked for your pay if you don't have every single element of your uniform in place. Dress codes, you can be, uh, you know, forbidden to go in someplace. You can be sent home from school if your dress code isn't, isn't proper for the day. Um, you can be, uh, you know, excluded from a restaurant or a club because you're not wearing the right outfit. Um, so, you know, so why, that's a reason why we're always nervous about what we're wearing. And then it's a status thing. Um, are we trying to be relevant or is it really about our insecurities about our own body that are underneath, and how did all of that happen? Um, you know where the body. Yeah, well, it's interesting. Though, a lot, a lot of the things we you, you're talking about are, are 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 a lot of the things we ourselves put on, uh, more, uh, and then uh, some of the others are things that the the fashion industry put on us, and then there are things that are actually required sometimes because of where you work or job things or like that. Yeah, I mean, some of it is safety. Some of it is, I mean, it used to be to connote your status. You know, you had to dress this way if you were a slave. You had to wear this outfit if you were royalty or some sort of dignity. Right. And well, a lot what, what of it is around couched in, you know, polite society that we want people to be covered. But, you know, being covered and... But today people don't even want to be covered, though. <laughs> they want to show some where, skin. <laughs> it depends on where in the world you are. I mean, if oh, you right. are in the proper outfit mm -hmm, in certain mm -hmm. parts of the world, you, it's punishable by law. You know, um, you can be- Women, you know, they can't have to have their heads yes. covered. Yes, you know, so, uh, you know, it, uh, so where does all of that meet? And then how do we, 
you know, how do we live within the, the, the structure, within the confines of it? And then we add all these things on that we say, well, am I adding that on myself? Or is it because fast fashion has told me every single season, I, I you know, you, bell bottoms aren't in this year. The pant line is, you know, you're supposed to have, you know, ankle <laughs> length. You're right, supposed right. to have high-waisted, right. low-waisted, you know, all these different things. Skinny jeans. No, that's not cool anymore. I mean, all of it, we are, which has now created this excess um, and then the fa the fabrics that we choose. And then on the other side, we have people that are starving too at the same time. Yes. They can't yes. even find clothes to, to wear in certain situations. But did we see, Jody, have we seen all the images from the installation? I wasn't sure because we were talking. Did I get them, did we get them all up? We did. The, the, okay. I, I didn't want to take you away. I wanted to make sure we got, got, got the images up. But you know, one of the things that, it, 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 it takes me to as our choices, right? And how we really ultimately feel about ourselves uh, and how we much we buy into. Of course, there are times where you have to, you, you remember, I, is there any places today, I mean, how many places, in terms of how many places you had to wear a jacket to go to dinner or a something? Like, you can, they can tell you, you can't get into the restaurant without a tie. How you many, know, how many places? Allowed, women weren't allowed on red carpets until just recently, unless is that they true? were tight to their heels which then kept it to a certain uh, age bracket usually because older women weren't always comfortable wearing the higher heels. So that's how they regulated who was on a red carpet by, okay, it has to be a four inch stiletto. I never, knew this. This is so I never knew this is outrageous. Really? Yes, 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 yes. And you would know that you've done all the red carpets, so you know. Yeah, so, wow. you know, like, hmm, things are changing. I would have been like thrown off of many a red carpet my age but um but yeah i mean so where where does all that mean and i think in the last couple of years we're really looking at all of that and saying how much of that is necessary um how much of that is uh self you know uh, <laughs> i brought that on myself and how much of it is media or someone else looking at you you know body size body image those things that, those conversations that we're having body images are another because because it's all part of it. You know, that was, I think, why this installation for me at this time was so important. I have somebody who's who has lived. Now, now, with, now, did you get your inspiration from it because of your own journey with clothes and your own absolutely, journey? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I grew up very in a in a middle class family. So, you know, you had hand me downs from your siblings or your cousins. Um, you didn't really talk about it, but that was, you know, the world. That you, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, then when you're getting to be a little bit older and in high school and you're noticing people that maybe have a certain brand that they're wearing or a tag is on their clothes that you don't have, I think you're aware of that. I think that you're aware of your body shape as people. You know, you just sort of, you know, with I mean, most You were always gorgeous, them. right? When you were growing up, you were always gorgeous because oh, I, I always knew you were gorgeous, right? <laughs> Uh, see, that's the friendship thing that goes back so far. So you're you looking. Be, is that your, true? Am I, did I, am I perceiving well, I, you wrong? No, I, I thank you. I have been in uh, what I consider to be sort of a blessed, you know, uh, you know. You always look good. Okay. You know? yeah, so I you mean, have no. The point I'm getting to is you didn't really have body issues. You had more. See, or you that's did. an assumption that is not quite right. That, that's what I'm I, trying to find out. Dig for yeah, it. No, I mean, I was, uh, you know, it, it sort of went the other way, you know, as you know, our young, you know, child attractive. developing um, and people making comments about your body. I was, okay. uh, I worked at a mall when I was 16 years old and mm -hmm. I had my name tag, which was my first and last name on the name tag. Mm -hmm. And this was, uh, you know, back in the 70s when malls were, you know, all the community malls were just coming, um, you know, coming becoming popular and being built all over the country. And I had, um, and at that time, you had to like trace calls for two minutes. I was getting obscene phone calls at home, and then I was getting them when I went to the mall because they knew what my name was. And if you're 16 years old, you work in one of the surrounding towns, so you know they. So there's lots of ways you can be uncomfortable in your body, not just even when it's you know what Plus, was the point that it makes somebody to do that, and then the policing of what I was wearing at 16 years old to work fell to the person who was the department, you know, head in the Sears and Robux, you know, what I mean, right. so he was the one looking at me and saying, you know what, that kind of peachy color, you're kind of asking for it.
you know, they wear a bright color like that, you know, so everything. So it's, you know, I had to do a little parade in the store for him and for other male executives that were probably in their forties telling me whether or not what I was wearing was appropriate. And that at certain no. times they asked me to go buy something different. So here I am, it's my, like my, my paycheck that I'm supposed to go buy something else at work to cover myself up because they were policing what I was wearing. So I've always had that. I looked at my mother who was, you know, very- um, Did she police you too? No, she really didn't. My mother uh, was somebody who was very conscious about her own mm. uh, body and her own, you know, because she had been following. But you adapted a lot of her own concerns. <laughs> yes. like it, it, no, Because people followed her. My right. mother was, uh, when she read out of high school, she was a telephone um, operator, you know. Now, uh, now let's fast, fast, Bonnie, fast forward today. Okay. <laughs> uh, have today, you lost a all lot? those things still live within me. I but think they, 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 they don't get triggered somebody. as easily. You can, you can navigate them a little better. Yes. No, I think so. And I think not. I think I spend less time thinking about it and less time thinking that it's not really my problem as much as it is somebody else putting that on me. Um, and so I think, you know, even from the opening of my uh, art installation that I invited friends, I had probably 75 people show up to the opening. And I had probably, it was probably close to 12 people either text me or email me to say, what am I supposed to wear? <laughs> and, and these are, you know, these are these are all women that are around my age, and I think they're. It's coming from a place of they want to please me. They want to show up yeah, and yeah, be wearing the right thing when they come to my art installation. <laughs> they're my friend trying to support me, so it's like, what do you want me to? What am I supposed to wear? You know. So I think that's another, you know, layer of this whole nothing to wear is that as you know, either as a friend, as a parent, as a spouse. Sometimes you're, these people in your life look to you to help them get dressed too. You know, I have five kids with, you know, a couple of them went to school where they had dress codes and uniforms, you know. And you, 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 you've been immersed in thinking about clothes off. Listen, our time is going fast and I, oh, I, 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 I want to get to the drama league a little bit too, but also oh. just real quickly, um, you know, the, you're, you've had, you you may do more of these. This how long for how long is the art installation there? If someone wants my, to see my it? installation goes until the end of uh, March. So it's and up, is up every March. day or what's what's the hours? It, um, I you know what is it? It's I, I don't have the exact hours in front of me, but it's online. So you my can go dad. to nothing to wear experience .com and it's there. N nothing um, to wear experience .com. Experience.com. But it's all yeah. it's it's every day almost. Yes. It's pretty much every day. Pretty um, much every day. Good. 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 Yeah, and, and and you. There was some talk you've been approached to maybe do more, another. Yes, I think this this concept resonates with so many people um, mm -hmm. that, that I've been asked to uh, do it, you know. Uh, recreate again. it. <laughs> <laughs> can I recreate it in a different space? And I said, let me see if I can get through this one first. Um, so I, I do feel that it's very um fulfilling that it, it has resonated in such a way with people that they're asking me to recreate it. Yes, it's fabulous. Had somebody come by today, you know, the press is covering it. You're mentioning it. I'm so thrilled with all of that. So, um, so I thank you for that. And then you said you wanted to get into the drama league. Well, um, yeah, because of the, the, the drama league is one of my favorite events of the whole season. It's a luncheon in the afternoon and everybody comes. It's, it's been immersed in the season. And you, I mean, you have like 75 nominees for outstanding performance which only one person gets to win and then you get best musical and best and they you have broadway and off broadway and and they're everybody off -off broadway. <laughs> everybody is in the room at once it's just it's really cool so it's celebratory it's celebratory there's no um there's no performances and i think that people are just so thrilled to be there and be included in that and then we have a dais at the front of the room that has as you said like 75 nominees um, from Broadway, off Broadway, and uh, off off Broadway, that are there. Producers are in, you know, a, 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 in the room. The playwrights, directors. I mean, it's really great. And all of the funding goes back to the Drama League's Directors Project program, which is for early career stage directors. We mentor these directors that are really on track to be successful anyway, um, but we sort of fast track their career by introducing them to other people within the industry and giving them opportunities for um, for showcasing their work in front of paying audiences. So, um, so we have uh, several different um, directors project uh, 
uh, events throughout the year that people can come to. Director Fest is coming up, I believe it's May 9th, uh, that will be uh, work uh, collaborating with the Keene Theater Company. So it will be in their space. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's the first time that we've done that. And I think that, you know, in this environment with uh, nonprofits and with arts in general is to be able to have uh, collaborators, to be able to have other organizations that align with what your mission and purpose mm -hmm. is, yeah. to work with each other, to try and support each other. Um, it worked out really well because Keen is... Uh, has they've a really worked space. on unearthing some really interesting plays and they, they, do, they do it consistently all the time and their, their performances are all consistently, you know, they're going to reach a level that's always up there. The bar is high for them. Yes, I think they're, they're, they're a good one to, to be working with. Now, now, when do the nominations come out for the uh, awards? We'll announce the, um, the 2024 uh, nominations for um, April 22nd. Oh, so it's right around the corner. About a it month is. Later. It's in about a month. It's just, mm -hmm. just over a month. So it's really exciting. So um, uh, Have they set the date yet for the um, And the awards award will actually be May 17th. I'll get that in my calendar. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Put it in your calendar. So and anything and we, else? And, well, with the drama league, we're they're the first awards of the season. So it's always um, not that you go to you know another award somewhere and that you're you know like oh here we go again. But I think it's uh, just the nature of the drama league luncheon that it's celebratory. It's a lunch. It's you know. Um, it's such a, a beautiful group just joining together in front of you um, that it really is a lot of the camaraderie of being in and and people are in it year after year that are in uh, that are in shows. So it really is um, it really is a special um, awards and we'll be at the uh, Ziegfeld Ballroom again this year. Oh wow! I, I I have so many wonderful memories of that afternoon in my stockpile of memories. <laughs> so and then you you're right you're right in the middle of a four year term as the president is that right it's, it's yes yes it's, well i'm not quite in the middle anymore i'm kind of like heading down uh, um, yeah i'm past the halfway point um but i've had a, a really amazing time there and i really feel that um what i've been able to bring to the drama league is something um oh yes definitely of, of pulling in other industry people being a, a you know a a producer myself and understanding that you know, if producers know what the mission is, then they're more aligned to the organization um, because we have the, the director's project. The, the Drama League is 100 and something, 110 years old, I think, at this point. And this particular program, which is the uh, director's project, is about 45 years old. And in that 45 years, every year we have approximately 10 new directors that come through. So there's 400 and something of these directors that are out in the world now. Um, every season on Broadway for the last 10 years, we've had at least a third of the shows on Broadway are directed by alum of the director's project. I know, it's incredible. I mean, you have some so, extraordinary directors that have come out of that program. I mean, so Diane Paulus comes right to mind right away. Yeah, you know, know. They're, they're so generous with their time because they think they feel connected to the organization. Mm -hmm. They feel like they were mentored and they were brought into the industry by other people and they're so willing to give back to these other, you know, up and coming directors to say, oh, hey, come here. So they're shadowing them. They have, you know, these amazing opportunities to um to to shadow uh these directors and um and they always make themselves accessible to to this group uh which is it, it just it's so um it just makes it, it it just makes it all worthwhile and i think that we're one of the last standing uh directors you know early career stage director mentoring programs around the country um because as i said the arts are struggling and so sometimes the directors programs have been the first ones to be cut. Um, so now, well, when we're talking about the art struggle and can we just talk and I want to I, actually maybe we Broadway HD we wanted to talk a little bit more about that too so we have about three minutes I don't know where we go what do you, <laughs> let's talk. I, I hate talking about the art struggling because I think the okay, arts so are it's it's a you know it's a it's always been a difficult uh, career path is to be in the arts. It was never yeah. really looked upon as um, a legitimate career at times. Um, but what, but what, when art struggling, the, the Broadway's booming though, are they not? 
Broadway is booming, but you have to look. The small at theaters it. is where they're struggling, yeah. right? There's like, 41. That... There's 41 Broadway theaters in the pandemic. All 41 of them went down overnight, and a hundred thousand workers were unemployed overnight. We now have probably 26 shows in those theaters. So we're still so the the shows that are there. There's a lot of them that are doing really well. And this season we have, I think it's in the next uh, two months, we have 17 shows opening. 17 that shows. Means are... That they're rotating. <laughs> so some of these shows didn't actually work. Some of right. them only lasted oh. for a month or two. And they didn't plan on lasting for a month or two. Sometimes we have limited runs that are announced that said, we right. only have, and it's usually star-driven. You know, Hugh Jackman or whoever it is can only right. stay here for this period of time. So when he's gone or she's gone, you know, then we're going to try and recast but we, you know this is going to be a limited run and i but think you I'm have no, you have nothing coming in the fall that you're that you have your finger in i don't have a i don't have a, a a set show at this point i have things that i'm developing but i don't have anything that i have a set theater so we'll for. wait to talk about what you're developing yes <laughs> and, and, i'll be back i'll be back <laughs> take advantage of that 30-year relationship <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, <laughs> so, so we have about two minutes. I was going to talk a little bit more about Oklahoma, but what, is there anything else that's exciting that's coming on Broadway HD that you want to share with us? I think we, we're doing some watch parties that I think are really exciting. I think in the, you know, in going into our 10th year, we're looking at what works and what doesn't. At the beginning of our business, so much of it was about the live streaming. We thought, oh, everybody wants to see these things live streamed happening in real time. And what we found for our audience was they really wanted access to this content, not that they needed to watch it at eight o'clock at night when the curtain went up. So just that they have it that they can watch on demand at any time that they want, that we have hundreds of full length stage plays and musicals for people to watch, for people to experiment with. Because when you talk to people about Broadway, a lot of times they have a set idea of what it is. It's usually like it's a big musical and it's like kinky boots. And you know what? We have kinky boots, but there's other things. No, there, there's so much versatility. Yeah. You, and you know what's else really marvelous about everything you do, the special captures that you do with the different cameras that give you such different vantage points that you would never have in the theater that makes it so much more intimate sometimes than actually being there. I mean, not I would never want to give up going to the theater, but it, it's, a, it's a unique experience. It really is. It's fabulous. And I think the really well done captures of these shows make you think about what it is that you're missing if you're not going to the theater. So I think watching this type of theater, watching well done digital captures on Broadway HD is propelling people to buy tickets to the live performances. Because it's like you're listening to people laughing or applauding um, in the theater. You're, list you're watching these actors and saying, you know what, I like... I need to go and see one of these shows. So and really, on that, that we're going to have to say, if you can't get to Broadway, get to Broadway HD. And our time is up, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> Here's my so new muse. Me. Meet my new muse. <laughs> Did I <finally? laughs> thank, thank you so much for coming to do this. 